This is the African history class and our elders say, until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why we must tell our own story. We have heard your story, his story, time now to tell our story. And this is the lion's story. This is the African history class. And today we are taking you all the way to the land of Jamaica to talk about one of the most atrocious atrocities. One of the most gory of all the atrocities that happened on the island of Jamaica. Today we are telling you the story of a man who should rather be called an animal. But because of what conditions existed in those days, he would pass for a human being. Today we are telling you the story of Thomas Thistlewood. Thomas Thistlewood. Now Thomas Thistlewood was born on the 16th of March, 1721. And he was born in Top Holm, right there in Lincolnshire, England. He was a son to a farmer. And this farmer had two sons. When the farmer died, he had a vast acreage of land and he left behind some money as his inheritance. Thomas Thistlewood had 200 pounds. With the 200 pounds at the age of six, it looked like there was nothing he could do with this amount of money. Or better still, there was everything he could do with 200 pounds at the age of six. He waited until he came of age and then decided to go for the kill with his 200 pounds sterling. Thomas Stilselwood decided to travel around to find what he could do with his 200 pounds. He first wanted to become a surveyor. So he invested part of the money in learning surveying. Unfortunately, his master and mentor who was teaching him surveying died. And he saw that as ill luck. He told himself, if my master can die at this age, it means that it's not a good omen for me to learn surveying. His master was a man called William Wallace. William Wallace was a surveyor of quality. He was a man who was respected all over the area. And when it came to surveying, it looked like he was a master. He was an authority. But when he died at that early age, Thomas Thistlewood told himself, this is a bad omen. If I also study this and become a master like my master, I might end up visiting an early grave. Many other people said, his actual master was a man called James Crawford. But history tells us it was William Wallace. When he was 29 years old, he decided that he would travel around the world. He traveled to some countries around Europe and even beyond. He returned after a year and he decided that 
he had settled on one island that he found very interesting to live in, and that was Jamaica. He traveled all the way to Savannah Lamar in Jamaica. He arrived on the 4th of May in 1750, and he saw the island of Jamaica so beautiful. At this point, he had already blown all his 200 pound sterling inheritance. So he was looking for a job. When he arrived in Jamaica, he met a man by name John Cope. And John Cope owned a very large piece of land. In fact, about 1,500 acres of land, which he named Egypt for obvious reasons. He wanted this piece of land to achieve the status of the legendary land called Egypt. So he named it Egypt. 1,200 acres of the 1,500 acres was all water. And it was best for the production of sugarcane. John Cope loved animals. So he started rearing animals. And he put Thomas Thistlewood in charge of the animals and in charge of the whole Egypt acreage of land. So he took over. But there were slaves on the land as well. So many slaves. And these slaves worked very, very hard. They were beaten night and day. There were women on the land who worked their back dry in order to plant so many different things that Egypt wanted. These slaves, most of the time, did not even have time to rest. And they were fed so poorly. It was on this piece of land. Thomas Thistlewood worked and made so much money. What was his delicacy? He loved to rape the black slaves. He met a lady who was originally owned by his master, John Cope. And this woman was called Phoeba. P-H-I-W-B-A-H. Phoeba. Phoeba was a beautiful black woman. And when Thomas Tilstillwood saw her, he decided that he wanted this lady. They started a relationship. Later in life, they had one son. And that was the only son he could lay a finger on and say, this is my biological child. But of course, he had made several other children from the rape that he meted out to innocent black women who were on the land of Egypt, right there in Jamaica. Now, Savannah Lamar is located in Jamaica in the parish of Westmoreland. Westmoreland is that parish that gave birth to heroes like Peter Tosh. It is also said that the best marijuana in the world comes from Westmoreland. Savannah Lamar is supposed to be the capital, the biggest city of Westmoreland. That was where Thomas Thistlewood first landed and he started his rape escapades. Thomas Thistlewood made enough money and decided that he was going to build his own empire. So he started off by acquiring a smaller piece of land. And this smaller piece of land was only about 600 acres. And therefore, he moved away from Egypt, the big land that was about 1,500 acres. But when he moved out, he had very, very terrible ideas in his head. Can I rewind a little bit? Can I rewind a little bit? Rewind. Come, 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 come. Listen. Thomas Thistlewood, remember we said, was born on the 16th of March, 1721. And he was born where? In England, a place called Lincolnshire. Specifically, in the town of Topholm, underline Lincolnshire. I'm going to be telling you about Lincolnshire very, very soon. He was educated at a place called Ackworth in West Yorkshire. 
That was where he was educated. And he studied mathematics and practical science. When he arrived in Savannah Lamar, in Westmoreland, he decided to put his science into practice. He bought so many books and had them shipped all the way from England to his base in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland. He read a lot and he started some science practicals, left, right, and center, to see how he will be able to improve crop production and, of course, animal husbandry. Listen to this interesting thing. Something interesting happened. He was a very terrible slave master. He kept his slaves very hungry. Yet when he had guests visiting him from England, he fed them so well whilst the slaves sat aside and watched the guests enjoy. What kind of meals did he give to his guests? He gave them mud fish, watermelons. He gave them special salmons and also special alcohols. Meanwhile, the slaves ate once in three days. A lot of them were sick and very hungry. Thomas Testelwood was such a bloodthirsty vampire. What did he do? As you were told, he made sure that all the slaves that he supervised were very hungry. They ate once in three days. He raped the women day after day. Again, slaves were supposed to produce the food, the watermelons, the cabbage, and all other fruits and vegetables that were needed in Egypt. And I'm talking about that 1,500 acreage of land in Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland, owned by John Cobb and, of course, William Doreen. When he made enough money, he decided to have his own. But can I tell you something? Watch this. There was a slave by name Scotland. And this slave was a very strong slave. He loved to eat food. But to wait and eat food once in a third day was difficult for him. So he stole watermelons and some sugar cane, hid somewhere and was eating. And when the security saw him, and this all happened on the land known as Egypt, they arrested him, reported him, and Thomas Thistlewood ordered that he be shot. And he was shot and killed for stealing sugar cane and watermelons because he was hungry. For three days, he hadn't eaten. Thomas Thistlewood made a lot of money, so he moved away from Egypt. Remember, don't confuse this with the legendary land of Egypt. This was a piece of land, 1,500 acres of land. In America, they say 1,500 acres of land. In Westmoreland, he moved away from Egypt and established his own land, which he called the Bread Knot Island Pen. And this was a 160-acre land. He initially wanted 600 acres of land. It was agreed that he would have all 600. He had already started boasting that he had 600 acres of land. But when he arrived, he couldn't pay for all 600 acres of land. He had only 160 acres of land. And look at the interesting thing. On this small piece of land, he had 30 slaves. Do you know how big 160 acres of land is? He had 30 slaves on the land working for him. In 1779, the slaves increased to 32. In 1782, 34. And out of the 34 slaves he had in 1782, 9 of them were men, 12 were women, and 13 were underaged. But he kept all of them, raped all the women night and day, sodomized the little ones. Sometimes he beat them to death. Thomas Thistlewood. Watch this. 
there was a hurricane which happened in October 1780. And when this hurricane came, it killed a lot of the sheep that he had on this land known as the Breadnut Island Pen, right there in Westmoreland. And when the animals died, he asked the slaves to eat the dead animals. And they ate the dead animals. When slaves misbehaved, look at what he did. He locked them up and made sure they did not eat for at least seven days. Those who died should die. But in order to keep them away from dying, this is nasty. He made the weak slaves open their mouths whilst the obedient slaves release feces into their mouths. You want to hear it again? Slaves who misbehaved according to the laws of Thomas Tistlewood, he locked them up and made sure they were so hungry. And to keep them alive, he fed them with human excreta. They opened their mouths and life there and then. Other slaves were ordered to release feces into these mouths. That was what kept them alive for seven days. When the women misbehaved, he raped them and beat them. All the 34 slaves he had, he tattooed on their shoulder. Better still, he branded them with hot iron, TT, which means Thomas Tistlewood. Whilst he was in Jamaica, he wrote in his diary of 14,000 pages. You heard it. All his life, from the day he arrived, who he slept with, who he raped, who he loved, who he hated, and even the little, little wars that happened. Remember the Akompon War? Remember the Kujo War? He praised them for being very bold. But there was a slave known as Congo Sam. Congo Sam was a very powerful slave. He escaped from Egypt. Remember, we are still talking about that 1,500 acres of land owned by John Cop and William Doriel. He escaped. When he escaped, the supervisor at the time was Thomas Tistlewood. Now that he had his own 160 acres of land, which he called the Bread Nut Island Pen, he was walking in the woods one day when he saw Congo Sam coming. He accosted him, tried to arrest him. And Congo Sam was holding a blunt cutlass, blunt machete. He beat him until he almost died. But two other slaves, females, were also around and they saw the beating and started to stay away and pretend they didn't see it. They wanted Thomas Tiltedwood to be killed. Whilst Congo Sam was beating him with a blunt machete and he was bleeding, another slave by name London came up and defended Thomas Tiltedwood because it was the law that if your slave master was attacked by anybody at all, you, the slave, must support and fight and free your master. Thomas Tilsonwood was bleeding. He was almost dead. But London came, helped him, freed him, and arrested Congo Sam. When Congo Sam was arrested, the matter went to court, the slave court. And look at what happened. London at that point refused to testify against Congo Sam. And Congo Sam was freed. But he testified against the two ladies and said the two ladies were standing aside watching Congo Sam beat their master. The two ladies said, we didn't have the strength to fight such a strong man. But they rather suffered. They were given 100 lashes each. 100 lashes each the ladies took. Congo Sam was free. He went away. Tistlewood stayed and became strong with the days, drinking good chicken soup and Jamaican root wine. He became very strong and continued with his atrocities. He had a special guest who came from England by name William Beckford. He made some very good soup for him, whilst his own slaves were very, very sickly and malnourished. 
Look at what happened. In 1781, he was tired of the land, bread not island pen, and wanted to sell it, but nobody wanted to buy it because of the atrocities on the land. The rape, the killing, the flogging, the branding, and all the other atrocities. Nobody wanted to buy that piece of land. So he continued being on it. Again, the land had been ravaged by hurricane upon hurricane. Every time there was the slightest hurricane in Jamaica, it affected that piece of land called Breadnut Island Pen in Westmoreland. So people saw it as a bad omen to even buy that piece of land. He never sold that land until he himself died. Nobody bought it. But before he died, look at what happened. He slept with almost all the slave women. Several times, multiple times. He was still not satisfied. He would go onto other plantations and ask to sleep with more slave women. In fact, rape them. That was what he did. In those days, men were allowed to go onto other plantations and breed women so that their numbers would increase. That was what Thomas Tistlewood did. He liked black women. And I'm talking about lustfully. Watch this. He had an uncle by name, Atta Tistlewood, who had also visited from England. And he also decided to stay because he had free women to sleep with. He had free food from the slaves. And in England where he was a nobody, in Jamaica there, he was a somebody amongst the slaves. So he had a big complex surrounding him. Watch me. Remember I told you about Fiba. Fiba was the slave girl who Thomas Tiftlewood had a relationship with. She got pregnant and gave birth to a son by name Mulatto John on the 29th day of April in 1760. Interesting. Watch this thing. Two slaves decided to get married. And when these slaves decided to get married, Thomas Tilsinwood said he must have a ritual. What was the ritual? Mary Holmes. Remember I told you I was going to tell you something about Lincolnshire, where Thomas Tilsinwood was born? Had come all the way from Lincolnshire. And I'm talking about Mary Holmes. She was a white woman. She had heard about the success of Thomas Tilstonwood. And she came home to Jamaica to get married to Thomas Tilstonwood. When she arrived in Jamaica, he told her point blank, I am not turned on by white women anymore. It is black women who give me that kind of libido. She went back to England with a broken heart. He had more treated black women. He was a sadist, a rapist, and no other kind of women in the world pleased him. He made the white woman return to England. Two slaves were going to get married. The male was called Johnny, and the female was called Little Mimba. When they got married, Thomas Tistlewood said there must be a ritual. He would be the first person to sleep with a woman before the husband on the night of the wedding. And he did it. After that, he called on his uncle, Atta Tistlewood, to also come and enjoy the black woman. When it became too much, one evening, they woke up and realized that Atta Tistlewood had drowned. Your guess is as good as mine. Who did that? We are ending the story. This is the African history class. And here, the lion roars with authentic African history. Today, we are talking about Thomas Tistlewood, a very dangerous man you probably have never heard. Jamaicans can never forget this man. Africans and black people should always remember these atrocities meted out to us. He had slept with so many different women, raped them, he caught syphilis. And when he had syphilis, he started becoming sicker and sicker. 
He tried to sell his land so he would return to England. He tried, but he became sicker and sicker, sicker and sicker. He died. He couldn't go back to England. He died. He died on the 30th of November in 1786 at the age of 65. He had lived long enough to rape so many black women, lived long enough to kill so many black people, lived long enough to desecrate the marriages of so many black people. He came from England with only 200 pounds. From when he was six years, he came from England, went to so many different places, by the age of 29, he decided that it was Jamaica he wanted to live in because the slave business was so rife and lucrative on the island. When he entered Jamaica on the 4th of May in 1750, the rest became history. Today we remember the story of Thomas Tisdale, a man who destroyed a lot of black people, a man whose story would always be told any time we tell the story of slavery. He died in Jamaica, was buried in Jamaica. He left behind one child, Mulatto John. Today we remember him. Today we remember you. He's resting in the hottest part of hell as we speak right now. Satan is sodomizing him night and day. No matter how loud he cries, Satan is still sodomizing him with no mercy. It's been the African history class and in the burden of knowledge. I ask you, now that you know the story of Thomas Stillwood, what would you do? Be an any ole amini obafe, yezunda kagane nezaka yu. Yeah, Papa will book I and Mephifia and Yanukai now or Banai. Lele and Jima sing a bear coming. Lele and Jima sing a bear. It's been the African History Class. Remember to subscribe to our channel. It's called the African History Class. And African is spelled A F R W E K A N. Class is K L A W S. This is where you hear authentic history. My name. Black Rasta.